Hey everyone, welcome to the Movie Throne. I'm your host, the one and only King Kansas, here to bring you another movie review right here on our YouTube channel. Wow, I finally had the chance to watch this new Mortal Kombat movie that just literally got released in theaters and on HBO Max. It's directed by Simon McQuaid. Stars a whole bunch of wicked actors. I'm just a good movie. Looks like a good movie based on what I saw in the trailers. I'm going to check it out. You know? But speaking on that level, guys, if since you guys are Mortal Kombat fans, I can know there's a lot of you out there. If you are expecting this movie to be like any of the other ones you've seen before, you're wrong. I'll tell you guys right now. For me personally... It's like an hour and 40 minutes, guys, so it's not even that long as well, okay? It's directed by Simon McQuad, or McQuaid, whatever you want to pronounce it. It's 14A. Don't let your kids watch it. It's based on the video game created by Ed Boon and John Tobias. So I'll tell you guys right now, the outfits, the way they look, they nailed it a thousand percent. The storytelling, pretty damn good at times, especially in the beginning, and how they kind of explain the mythology of why they're there and why there's these people from this place called Outworld ruled by Shang Tsung. Uh, and why Raiden's there and he's kind of like the guardian of both worlds or some crap like that. I'm not 100% sure on that, guys. But he's pretty much the good guy in the film. The good god, Shang Tsung's the bad god. My god, some of the fatalities that you see, crazy. Uh, sucking of the soul, ripping out of the heart. Jax, it's not a spoiler, but uh, you know, if you guys are big video game players, he loses his arms. You see exactly how he loses his arms. Sub-Zero is pretty much like the main baddie of the film. He's uh, Shang Tsung's right-hand man. He has connection to Scorpion, and that's where kind of like the story begins at the beginning. Uh, you see how Scorpion's family is peaceful by itself. He's guard. He's one of the best, apparently... Warriors there is in Japan and Sub-Zero is going after him because apparently in order to fight in this tournament or for you to be anything of equal value or a danger to Shang Tsung, you have to have that dragon, the symbol of Mortal Kombat pretty much, that dragon album like on your skin somehow. If you don't have it, you ain't a threat. And I think every year for the last 10 years, I think there's nine wins or something like that. He needs one more to kind of like pretty much do whatever he wants with Earth. So anyways, there's a little dilemma there. But uh, he sends uh, Sub-Zero to kill all these fighters before the tournament even starts. So he can get the upper hand and win. That's what he wants, right? And of course, Raiden, you know, he's Mr. Stick by the rule. Don't want to get your hands dirty. Follows the law and stuff. But you fight. You, that's where you meet uh, Cole Young. He's like an MMA fighter. Hard on his times. Gets the sh crap kicked out of him. I'll tell you right now. So he was a champion of some sort. But now... I don't know, he's lost his confidence, something like that. So he's pretty much the joke. <coughs> Pardon me, guys. And, uh, yeah, it's just crazy. You follow him on his journey. He meets up with uh, Jax, which is a cop. That you think he's a cop or some sort. He's actually military. And then through him, you meet Sonya Blade, which was in the same battalion as him. They're kind of like putting everything together of this whole Mortal Kombat mythology, if you want to say that. So they get uh, Cole Young to get in on it, and that's when they slowly, you know, meet this guy, Kano guy, which is a scumbag of the, you know, planet, face of the earth that she's managed to capture, and he knows where to find Raiden. They end up going there, and that's where the story continues. They do their training, guys, which it sucked. I don't know. It just was a letdown. It started off strong, the film, and then it kind of, like, disintegrated, and then picked up right again near the end when you have all the guys fight each other. My God, like some of them you think that it would totally annihilate the others, but nope, it went down like sack of flies. Let's just say that, you know, guys, but I don't know. For me, it was okay. It wasn't great. Like I said, it had its ups and downs. The beginning was phenomenal, then a weak middle, and then a somewhat okay end. Even the conclusion was kind of like, that's it. You know, 2 on one It took two of you guys to beat Sub-Zero. Let's just say that. I'm going to put the spoiler up, guys, from the beginning. So don't worry. You guys will be warned that it's pretty much a spoiler. There's no point in doing a non-spoiler, whatever. It doesn't make sense. 
But uh, yeah, the beginning of the film, you see how what happens to uh, Scorpion, how he gets killed, his family and stuff like that, and he ends up going to hell. He ends up being brought back near the end, and he ends up taking on Sub Zero and gets his revenge, which is pretty cool. And uh, Cole Young apparently is part of his bloodline, so I don't know if that's cool or not. You guys know better than anybody. There was a cool fight scene with this lizard-looking thing. I think it was Reptile, if I'm not mistaken, that Sonya Blade and uh, Kano, I guess, confront when they're in their little hideout there, which looked pretty cool. Cheesy at times, but it was cool, especially when he dies. That's the part that I'm talking about, that he gets his heart ripped out by Kano. And, of course, apparently... Every fighter doesn't know that they have these uh, these powers that, you know, they have to bring this Akana, I think they call it, you know, the powers out of them to discover who they are. And they meet Kung Lao and and all those guys there. And it was pretty cool. And Liu Kang, they already have their powers developed. Uh, it looked good for the most part, guys. You know, Kung Lao looked cool with this hat that he tossed around and razor blade. Holy shit, there's one scene that he's fighting one of the villains. There's a lady, I think her name is Natara or something, that Ching Sun ends up sending after him. And he kind of puts his hat down and it starts spinning like saw, pretty much. And slices her right down the middle. So I was like, are you joking? You know? Oh, my God. And then there's there's also, a, pardon me, guys, the six-armed uh, character. I can't remember for the love of God me what it was called or who he was called. But he ends up getting defeated. Not easily, but... A lot quicker than you thought, right? There's like a street fight somewhere at uh, Cole Young's uh, home, uh, Louis Tan's uh, home there with his family there. It was a confrontation. He gets hit by a car and his hands get sliced out. Uh, like, are you joking? Are you serious? You know, even Shang Zin, you thought he was going to like participate a little more. Don't get me wrong. That scene that he sucks the soul out of uh, Kung Lao. Holy shit. That looked pretty cool. I'll give him that. But not too much. It was almost like he was afraid of Raiden, but not. But I don't know. The end of it is like basically the good guys win, bad guys lose. But the bad guy says, I'll be back. And I'm not going to be back with warriors this time. I'm going to be bringing back my whole entire army to go after you. And I'm like, really? So he ends up going back to where he's from before Raiden can take him out kind of thing. And then he goes, okay, guys, you know what we got to do? We got to pretty much uh, find new warriors. So you can find a few new guys. Anyways. So he has the guys who are remaining, which is pretty much everybody survived, okay? Even Sonya Blade. And except, uh, sorry, Kung Lao is the one who one bit the bullet because Shang Tsung took his soul. But everybody else managed to survive, even though they're a little bit hurt here and there. Some funny moments here and there. Um, not too many, though, I'll tell you right now. So they end up uh, getting their, uh, what do you call it, power? Sorry, instructions is what they get from uh, Lord Raiden. So they get their instructions from Lorraine. They got to go find these warriors across the globe. So the first thing is uh, Lou Stan. You can see him. He comes. He gets confronted by that promoter that he was making two hundred dollars a fight to pretty much get his ass kicked. Goes, uh, I need you, kid. The next uh, tomorrow night. And he says, Sorry, dude. I got other plans. Like what? He tells him, I'm going to Hollywood. He goes, Hollywood. What the hell are you going to do in Hollywood? He goes, Well, oh, I got to find someone there. And basically, guys, there's some music that plays, and then you see. On a poster, had Johnny Cage. So that's who's in Hollywood. So that's one of the characters they kind of hinted in the sequel, if there is a sequel. But I don't know. Personally, I don't think there's going to be. But that's just me because I'm a Street Fighter fan. It was okay. Kind of a letdown, personally. I thought there was going to be more in-ring matches, like, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. You get the, uh, the scenery, like the pit and all that stuff, kind of like briefly here and there. I thought he was going to have uh, more of that, but who am I to say? And that's kind of where it ends off him leaving to go to Hollywood. And then what kicks in? A different, I guess, not remix, but version of the Mortal Kombat techno song plays at the end. And that's how it ends an hour and 40 minutes later. And me kind of like, that's it? What's going on? But anyways, so guys, overall, I liked it. I would have wished I loved it. I expected a lot more. Didn't have high expectations, so I can't blame that. That my expectations were through the roof, and I expected like Endgame or something. That wasn't the case. It was good. I don't know if you Mortal Kombat fans are gonna really like it because if anybody's gonna have an honest, serious opinion, if it was faithful to 
the actual material and the video games that you guys all went bananas over and played? I don't know. I'd probably have to talk to Dr. Movies and he's going to give me his opinion. That's who needed to really actually do a review is him because he is a Mortal Kombat fan. And uh, he would have a better idea if it lived up to his expectations and if it was good. But for me, it was just another movie to watch. Not even two hours. Not with your kids. Sit on the couch, eat some popcorn, and just take it as it is. Just a video game movie that's kind of ridiculous with a lot of violence, swearing, and a little bit of martial arts, which I expected a lot more, to tell you the truth. But, hey, that's the king's opinion. So that's my opinion, guys. That's my review on Mortal Kombat 2021. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Like, share, and subscribe. Check out our other content right here on the Movie Throne. My other reviews, my movie recommendations, TV reviews, the podcast, you name it, the work. So until then, be the hell good. The king's out of here. And uh, yeah, I got a few things to do. Take it easy, guys.